Governor Christie came home from New Hampshire to handle the storm, stayed through the height of it, and hightailed it back to the campaign trail once the final flake fell. Chief Political Correspondent Michael Aaron is here with a report on the political implications. Michael, did he demonstrate he's a guy with executive capacity? I think you have to say he did. In fact, I think most observers would agree this was Christie at his best, along with the town hall format. The commander-in-chief, the consoler-in-chief when necessary, the master of detail. At the same time, some who follow him closely detected a serious change of mind about leaving New Hampshire. Here was Christie's response. The reporting that I wasn't coming back was wholly inaccurate and, and you know, didn't, didn't put into effect the words that I used. Am I coming home? I have no plans to come home. So what changed? The circumstances got worse and clarified. So as soon as it did, then I came home. Um, but if the storm blew out to sea and I came home, I'd look pretty stupid. And so the fact is that you make the decision when you have clarity on what the circumstances are going to be. So how did it play politically? A Christie supporter I spoke to said this was a no-brainer, that there was no downside to coming home, uh, that Christie got a lot of press out of this, local and national. He and Governor Cuomo were back-to-back -back on the air a lot this weekend. He said this time Christie closed the George Washington Bridge for the right reason, uh, but that there's probably not any significant repair with his relationship to New Jerseyans who are still kind of upset with him, or so the polls say. A Democratic operative I spoke to said Christie was all over the place on this one. There was too much braggadocio in his performance, uh, and that he made an awfully quick exit, as we saw yesterday. So uh, for all the people in New Jersey, thank you uh, for your support um, over the last uh, 24 hours in particular and staying home. Uh, and uh, we look forward to a normal, regular work week starting tomorrow. So uh, any questions, I'm happy to take them. Excellent. No questions. I'm out of here. Usually he looks disappointed if there are no questions. He looked uh, quite pleased yesterday. What about the flooding in South Jersey? He's getting hammered for downplaying it. He is, uh, and he is saying it's, it's receded, it's gone, it wasn't that bad. Uh, a Wildwood official said that it was worse than Sandy. Christie said, of course it was worse than Sandy. Sandy didn't hit Cape May County directly. It hit farther north in Ocean and Monmouth counties. Senator Jeff Van Drew of my, of Cape May County has called on the governor to request a federal disaster declaration. Christie's office, which is engaging in a lot of pushback on this story, says that the process is underway for that and that officials from Lieutenant Governor Guadano and DEP Commissioner Martin have been down there all day today. Everything's under control. Okay, Michael Aaron, thank you. Thanks, Mary Alice. For today's NJTV News question, how long did your commute take today? <laughs> Share your thoughts with us on our Facebook page or tweet us. I'm coming from Brooklyn. It took me an hour and a half to get here. No longer than it usually does. Well, I'm coming from Kearney. Regularly it takes me about 20 minutes a bus ride, but today it took me about like hour 20 minutes to get here. Yeah, everything was fine until they got into Newark and then the uh, traffic in Newark, the roads just weren't clear, everything was messy, there were cops all over the place. I came in, I have to connect to Sea Caucus to Newark, no problem there, it was perfect. Everything was on time, I loved it. I was in shock. this what's piling up in Atlantic City. Governor Christie pocket vetoed its rescue package, setting the town up for either a state takeover or bankruptcy. And now Atlantic City's credit rating, already a junk bond status, has been downgraded four notches from B to triple C. Standard & Poor says the city's imminent default on its debts with no prospects for recovery made the super downgrade necessary. At the Borgata Casino, the bad news is aimed at the Borgata Babes. 
21 current and former female cocktail servers went to court claiming the casino's strict weight guidelines and personal appearance standards were discriminatory. But the state Supreme Court's declined to review their case, letting stand a lower court ruling the Borgata's personal appearance policy is lawful and non-discriminatory to women. Support for the Medical Report is provided by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. The antibiotic penicillin was a Nobel-winning game-changer in treating infection, but that was back in 1928. Today, the Centers for Disease Control warn antibiotics are so over-prescribed, often unnecessarily, that it's causing bacteria to grow resistant strains. Lauren Wonka reports. A sore throat and cough prompted patient Casey Bufumo to visit with her doctor, except she's not necessarily looking for an antibiotic. I'd rather do home remedies, kind of water, rest, fluids. That's welcome news to Meridian Medical Group's Dr. LaDonna Elkani. She says about half her patients want a prescription for antibiotics they don't need. Why do you think that is? They expect to get something when you come to a doctor. Just like when I go to a store, I expect to get something. You know, they treat it in that kind of setting. They want to feel better. And the mentality is that antibiotics will do that. It's absolutely shocking how much antibiotics are used that are probably unnecessary. We estimate that about 50% of all antibiotics that are prescribed for respiratory infections are unnecessary. The CDC's Dr. Lori Hicks says the agency has lots of data that reveals overprescribing is quite common. It can lead to antibiotic resistance. The CDC indicates each year nationwide at least 2 million people become infected with bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics. And at least 23,000 people die as a direct result of these infections.